Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. I'm Gene Francine. Before the break, I was telling you all we would be giving you the very latest information as it relates to P. Diddy. Right now, I want to give you a live look out in Times Square, a different New York shot as we continue to talk about the very latest. We know in the first nine months of 2023, Sean Diddy Combs triumphantly performed at the MTV VMAs, released an R&B album that, re released, that received a Grammy nomination and was a suitor to buy the BET network. But several lawsuits filed late last year raised allegations of sexual assault and rape against Combs, one of hip-hop's most recognizable names as a performer and producer. The music mogul's homes in Los Angeles and Miami were searched Monday by federal agents with Homeland Security investigators and other law enforcement. Officials saying the searches were connected to an investigation by federal authorities in New York City. Joining us live this morning to further explain is Fox 5 New York's Lisa Evers. And Lisa, it's been quite a week with Diddy headlines. How are you separating the news from social media, tsunamis to gossip? I think that's what we need to do first and foremost, because, you know, we, we have to separate these two periods before this raid, these raids on his homes in Los Angeles and Miami that happened last mon Monday. From what we're hearing and seeing on social media, all the social media platforms, people seem to be coming out of the woodwork. Now, up until pre-Monday, the raids, he had five civil lawsuits filed against him. These are civil lawsuits. And it's important to keep in mind that even as of today, there are no criminal charges that we know of that are on public record against uh, Sean Diddy Combs. Has he beaten cases in the past, like the 1999 gun uh, gun case, which involved J-Lo at the time? Yes, but he has never been convicted of a crime. So that's important to keep in mind because I think when you look at the volume, just the sheer volume of accusations, it's a backup dancer. It's somebody who was in the club. It's people who, the uh, gentleman who was his music producer for, over the past year, uh, Rodney Jones, little uh, known as Little Rod. There are all these allegations. And I think a lot of people, particularly in the hip hop community, you know, up until that raid happened on Monday, they were basically saying, okay, well, these are civil cases. A lot of things can happen. You know, these are people are seeking huge numbers, seven figure. Uh, settlements to settle these lawsuits. Maybe it's more about money. Maybe things got exaggerated to get a bigger award, that type of thing. However, what Monday was last Monday was basically a, a change, you know, changed the whole game and took it into a very serious level, a federal level, a federal law enforcement level. And not only did we have the raids that we saw in Los Angeles uh, and Miami, but we also had Homeland Security and the Southern District of New York, which is the federal district that covers Manhattan and handles the federal court cases. It is known as one of the toughest jurisdictions in the United States and, and the most seasoned prosecutors. It's the, it's the district that many of them aspire to work at because it has such a, a reputation. So they, they basically said, this is under our, an investigation from our office. So it's an investigation that started out of New York but they were going through the Los Angeles home, going through the Miami home. And so far from what we know, again, officially on the record, not from what people are saying or what people are saying on blogs, uh, blog posts or the different social media platforms, is that no, he hasn't been charged. There was a man that was charged um, in Miami this, this week, who is the alleged drug mule for him. That's what they're calling him. But as of, as of now, there are no charges, criminal charges filed against him. Now, I spoke with some of my federal contacts and federal sources to find out what's really going on here. Because, you know, Gina, when we have a crime, when we see a crime being committed, the crime will be committed, there's an investigation, and then a lot of times we'll see a various police or sheriff's department they're making the apprehension. They're taking the people, you know, somebody into custody for that particular crime. The, in the federal, the federal uh, law enforcement arena, it's very, very different. They do their investigation. They do a lot of investigation. So people are like, oh, well, they raided the house and nothing happened. That was nearly a week ago. That doesn't mean the investigation is over by any means or that, that Diddy is in the clear. It just means that they are doing what they need to do uh, you know, in this particular case, knowing that it's so high profile, I'm sure that they're going to be going extra hard, extra careful to make sure they do everything by the book. Now, let's talk about that raid again, the Los mm -hmm. Angeles home. We saw these 
these heavily armored vehicles coming down a residential street in one of the most affluent, uh, you know, wealthiest areas of Los Angeles. They're going there. It's broad daylight. The uh, officers, the Homeland Security agents, they're in, in full tactical gear. That some of them have long guns, and they're going up there. So I spoke with a, home, a former Homeland Security um, official uh, investigator, and he told me that one of the the only way that they could have done that is if they had warrants that were based on evidence or testimony from other people saying that in this particular room there was this, in this particular room this happened, or in this particular room there were hidden cameras, which has been an ongoing allegation throughout the civil cases and also, of course, in the in the popular culture and on social media. But he said that they they had to have a very specific warrant in order to do the kind of raid that they performed, particularly in Los Angeles, and that it isn't a thing of where, you know, like you see on TV, oh, let's get the judge to sign off, and then they just sign, oh, yeah, you can go into the house. The, you're talking about the the L.A. properties, a $40 million property. There were, there were four buildings on their property, the house and then three other buildings. So they had specific areas they were looking for, specific things they were looking for. I'm sure a lot of it had to do with with computers, with laptops, with cameras, with any type of flash drives or hard drives, external hard drives that might be around to try to to uh, build these cases. Now, law enforcement sources tell me as well that they feel that there, there, there must be an informant within his camp at this particular time. So that's something to keep in mind as well. But as of this point, Sean Diddy Combs has not been charged with a crime, with a federal crime in connection with any of this. He's vehemently denied all of the civil uh, civil suits, has settled has settled some of them, but is still facing others. But with the and with the criminal charges, his attorney, um, Aaron Dyer, put out a, a very, very severe, you know, very strong statement saying this was just complete overreach by the feds. This was unnecessary that he categorically denies everything that's been happening. So that, you know, if you're just paying attention to that, it sounds like, okay, well, there's no nothing really much going on. But I think that is absolutely wrong because what we don't know is was there was there somebody that finally came forward and made a federal complaint or made a criminal complaint against him for these alleged sexual misconduct uh, incidents and some of the other incidents of trafficking and whatever. But Homeland Security confirmed what they were investigating was tr was trafficking and drug use. Those are their two main areas. Those agents in particular are expert in those areas because that is really their, their focus and their concentration. So I'm sure they're going through everything that they have, all the data that they, they have, whatever they were able to collect or find or not find in the, uh, in the various homes. And they're putting the pieces together. And let's keep in mind also, when you're talking on the federal level, they have a technological ca capacity that is extremely extensive. It's not just a question of getting a warrant to put a wiretap on one person's phone or one person's uh, laptop or iPad or whatever tablet, whatever they're using to communicate. It's, it's also, they have ways of, of aggregating the data so that they can look at it and say, okay, this person is talking to these three people at 2 a.m. in the morning every single time, you know, uh, on certain nights or whatever, and they can start to put together patterns. So I'm sure they're looking at everything that they have, and it's not a question of there's no investigation. It's a question of there's an investigation that's ongoing, and, of course, everybody's trying to speculate what's going to be part of that, how far can it go, and this is the other big question, Janae, is when you're talking about sex trafficking or human trafficking, there, in some instances, there's no statute of limitations. Um, in, in some cases, the, the legal experts tell me that there are, in other cases, there aren't. And so th there's just a lot of questions about this and what is going to come out of this. So that's on you know the, the side against Diddy of what he's facing. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of his stature, this is not just another hip hop artist turned entrepreneur. This is somebody that was a, is a larger than life figure. He was an A-list celebrity among A-list celebrity circles. His parties were incredible. His parties were incredible. I attended, I attended some of them when he was uh, based out of New York City. Many, many other people did. They were huge. There were hundreds of people. Anybody who was, everybody who was anybody was there from athletes to entertainers to people in the media business to uh, tycoons to investors 
all that, uh, you know, all of those types of individuals. So it remains to be seen who is going to end up, if anybody, being charged with this or if if this is being used to investigate allegations that were made. The other thing we need to keep in mind, too, is there were some um, extreme, uh, you know, starting with the, especially in the, the Cassie uh, civil suit and then the case that followed that, uh, victim number four, the Jane Doe, who was underage, who alleged that she was trafficked from Detroit to New York and then gang raped by Diddy and some of his associates. So the evidence in that, according to my understanding from legal experts, whatever, if there's anything that seems to be a valid, you know, a, an allegation of a crime, if it can be substantiated, the it will, that civil case can then turn into a criminal case. So we still don't know yet quite what set off this the activities that we saw last week, but it was a pretty clear cut statement from Homeland Security that there was an investigation underway and that it was being headed out of the uh, Southern District of New York. And New York, of course, is where all five of these uh, civil suits against Diddy were were uh, you know were filed, and then every day it seems, Jine, the you know there's another person coming out who used to work for mm -hmm. him, who was a dancer, who was this, who was that, um, saying they were here. This is what happened. But again, we have to you know we're journalists. We have to look at what are the facts. Did they ever file a criminal complaint? Is this the first we're hearing from them now? 10, 15, 20, 25 years. Uh, later, are there? Is there? You know, we. It's just people are. It's kind of this breathless anticipation of what's going to come next. But you know, the feds are going to take their time. I think because they got to the state, the point where they actually uh, staged these raids, um, that there's going to be some kind of activity within the next couple of weeks. Is the best estimation that I have from federal law enforcement sources of the timeline that is typical in these cases. And of course, with this. They don't know. Somebody may come forward. Somebody may have their own videotapes or their own, um, you know, their own materials or their own evidence. And it's it's just impossible to say where it's it's going to go. But it's definitely ongoing. And it's just I think it's important to keep in mind, too. You know, we we always say this every time we talk about a high profile uh, individual who comes in the crosshairs of law enforcement is that you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. However, in this day and age, you can be found guilty on social media right. with very little proof, you know, with very little proof. And, you know, it's a game of people wanting to do things for likes or maybe getting paid by pot to, to appear on certain people's podcasts or, you know, to do whatever they're going to do. So there's, there's definitely a lot more to come, but we have to look at what we're dealing with now. Five civil cases, on the books that have been filed, individuals that have come forward, that have gotten lawyers, that have gone through the legal process to file civil suits, no criminal charges yet against Diddy or maybe ever, depending upon what comes of this investigation. So a lot to keep our eye on here, Jeanne. Absolutely, Elisa. I'm so glad and appreciative that you joined us for this very detailed uh, breakdown of what's going on because it's so much, you know, the viewers have even been commenting. Uh, I saw some comments where they brought up his ex-girlfriend's uh, death. You know, she had that tell-all book that was coming out, then she passed yeah. away. But as you mentioned, keeping things separate, keeping that separate from Cassie. And then most recently, you know, Suge Knight speaking out saying, did yes. he know some things that he is not allowed to speak on, which you know, when Suge Knight speaks out, you're like, oh, goodness, what's about to happen next? So, yes. Lisa, I definitely appreciate you breaking this down. Uh, we have to go to our final break right now. But thank you so much for joining us this morning on Live Now. I hope you have a great Easter Sunday. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lisa.